In this video, I build the final part of our multi-material mega factory as well as a dumper truck driven by a maniac monkey. I also added a new elevator as well as a giant cobblestone generator and with everything in place and a bunch of useless monkeys in charge of my logistics, surely nothing can go wrong. Let's create. In the last episode, I built this amazing factory that's now working very efficiently because I've added a bunch of threshold switches connected to redstone links in various places in order to limit the items that we've got plenty of, including added in an AND gate that determines if three of the vaults are full to stop any more clay balls being frozen. So everything's working great, which is amazing as it took me such a long time rebuilding everything to get it just right. That said, things need to change in this episode as we're going to be using a bunch of the new materials as well as some of the old to produce even more items. So let's look at what we're going to do. We're going to take the soul sand we've got and we're going to wash it to create quartz and gold. We're also going to blast it to create scoria. We're going to take our red sand and we're going to wash it to get dead bushes and even more gold. Then we're going to bring in even more cobble, combine that with the quartz to make diorite, take some of that diorite, combine it with more more cobble to turn it into andesite and we're going to take some more of that diorite and combine it with quartz to make granite and that's a problem because the cobble generator is already maxed out producing for what we've currently got so i've got a plan underneath the factories in a new basement area that i dug out with my massive tunnel bore i'm going to build an even bigger cobble generator but getting down there isn't easy and it's still very awkward getting upstairs in the first factory i built because i have to sneak through the window so the first thing to do is to build a lift an elevator yes that's what i said a lift a little bit like this mechanical lift we've got at hill valley and the nicest thing is the doors open automatically when you get there and i think i'm gonna have it just about here that'll end up coming up slap bang underneath our cobblestone generator so i guess i've got to delete that again oh jeez. After I dismantled the cobblestone generator, I dug a 3 by 3 hole in each floor the elevator would stop on and proceeded to build using variations of frame blocks and textured them with industrial iron, creating as much space inside the lift as possible and leaving some of the frame blocks untextured so it had a more authentic feel. I left a small gap for the door, threw up a lantern inside for light and added in a redstone contact to connect to the first floor of the factory where I was building it. Then I added in controls, more redstone contacts for the other levels and added in an elevator pulley at the top connecting it to the existing power line in the room. With the mechanism connected, I started with some basic decoration for the lift shaft comprising of an industrial iron frame with more untextured frame glass panes around each side. Then I added a redstone link on each floor with a button underneath to correspond with the redstone contact so I could call the elevator to whichever floor I needed it on. With that done and the floors named in the controls, the final thing I needed was a door. And that brings us to now. So there we go. We now have a fancy lift that takes us down between all of the different floors and there's four floors altogether. There's the first floor here. We can obviously go to the ground floor which is now completely broken because we've got no way of getting the gravel to the iron and flint machine. We can go down to the power level where all of our power is coming in and this is a big old spaghetti mess as well. And of course we can go all the way down to the basement where we're going to be building our cobble generator. It's got a nice sliding door. I've done the framework all the way up. Anyway, now that the lift is in, it is time we went down to the basement and get this cobblestone generator in. That being said, I think I'm going to go to the power level first and sort out all of these power lines. Basically, we've got our main power coming from our power Power lines in here and then it sort of goes all over the place all higgledy piggledy to all of the different things in here that need it so first things first for our second factory instead of diverting off the main line over there i'm going to actually break this line where it comes in here stick on a gearbox and then just bring that along to our next factory and probably get run over while i'm at it geez and if i bring that roughly to where the middle of this factory is then i can bring that shaft along here and then i can link it up with all of those things next i'm adding in a gear shift here and this is for the main factory power and i'm signifying factory with the industrial block of iron with some gravel on it because this is going to be a gravel factory rather than cobblestone factory now and then that'll split off into different areas for all of the different things and the first thing i need is the elevator and all i'm doing at this point is putting a clutch on with a speed controller and i'm going to use gantry shaft to signify my elevator so that's the gravel elevator and then i just need to connect that to this if i've done it over a couple of blocks that'd have been really easy ah stop it and then on this side of the elevator here i can actually have all of the power being turned on and off like a little control panel so turn the entire factory off i just flick that one if i just want to turn the elevator off i flick that one and then i can connect these to all of the other things that i'm now going to do well this room's completely bare now no more gravel and cobble gens in here power though if i go down to our power level you'll see everything's nice and neat all in lines it's much easier to deal with now and we've got all of these clutches with all of these switches and that means that our actual factories had to change yet again 
I've done some more work on it. I've moved this washing machine slightly over. And then over this side, we've got the sand and clay crushing machines, which have got chutes going up to the top floor as well. And then I've had to do this to try and get everything to the middle because, well, basically, there wasn't enough room to get underneath it. And I wanted access to everything from here. And I think that's okay. The, ignore that. That's just a glitch. If I relog, that'll disappear. So I'm happy that we've got power and I'm happy with this again. Right. Now it's time to go down to the basement and build an incredibly big cobble generator. Now that's a lot of cobble generators. It's actually only twice the amount we had upstairs before. This thing has 64 cobble generators in it. The last one had 32, which means it should give us a stack every second of cobblestone. And we need a big old vault down here to take it all to the surface so that we can get it into the top of the factory. So let's throw another one into there. Throw that in there. We'll have a whole bunch of chutes coming out the top of that. And I guess we should probably have some sort of storage vault here, but I want it to be hidden in this mound of cobble. And it doesn't need to be massive because it's only going to be a temporary buffer storage. So then we can get our power from there down through here and into here. And that's pretty much the ideal position, to be honest with you. Big old cog speed controller and a clutch in there to make it on and offable couple of shafts in there that's those connected all right let's create many many speed all of the belts are now going in exactly the right direction which means all of this is going to feed our cobble through into this area over here and now we just need some power to this encased fan a horizontal gearbox there and a vertical gearbox there and hopefully that'll go the right way let's find out nope it's going the wrong way of course it is we'll switch the direction of that Put one of those there and one of those there. There we go. Now it's blowing in the right direction. So if I set this to exactly a stack, and when we've got a stack at a time, these will come through, and they should, there we go, get pushed into the chutes a stack at a time. You can just about see that cobblestone 64. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three miss Exactly one every second. The good thing about this system here is that if it turns out that all of these aren't enough cobble for what we need, I can double this up on the other side really easily. Oh, and while I'm here when I was digging this out check this room out all of this was underground almost like we got a terrain generation mod conflict somewhere and the next part of this project is to get the cobble out of here and into there I also while I'm here want to stick a threshold switch on there with a redstone link and this is going to be for our cobble generator to turn it off if this thing ever gets full which means I just need another redstone link on that clutch that we put down here in receive mode with those on as well now to get I items out of here and up to there I'm going to be using a belt and with a bit of support that looks more like it's supposed to be there that said I've no idea if that's enough room for our fork trucks to get under so let's find out <laughs> it just fits I think it needs to come out a little bit further and go up another block and there we go that looks a lot better than it did and now I just need a big old mound of cobble on here oh how could that be I don't think that looks too bad for now. We've got our nice little conveyor coming out of it, although that kind of looks a bit weird like that. But if I break that block, you can almost see what's going on in there. Perhaps what I need to do is just come and fill in some of the cobble down here a little bit just to disguise that. But I want it to look like it's feeding the cobble out from this big mound going up there and going into the system. And I kind of have achieved that. So now it's time to go back into the top of our building and build a brand new gravel generator. Let's extend that a block and get this coming into yet another item vault just so that we're collecting plenty of cobble up here it's going to cause a little bit of a problem with the elevator though oh man there's never enough room in this place okay if we were to do it this way we would have the brass funnels at that point pushing a stack into these at once and then we would need to get the items onto this conveyor here get a conveyor there all the way up to this point here going across the ceiling so it's nice and out the way if i put an item vault in there that's going to divert all of the items onto that bit there to get picked up by those and we can probably do do something similar over here that said we need to figure out how we're actually going to get the items up to there before we do that so perhaps i need to do a bit of jiggery pokery with this item vault now that it's full i'm just going to casually kill off 20 000 cobblestone this is fine 
Plan B for the vault is to bring it over to this side of the room. We've got cobble coming back into there, although I'm not going to actually bring it in yet until I'm ready this time because I don't want to have to burn it all away again. So now we're just going to get it from this vault into these two machines here. All right, we're going to have a shaft there going into that one there. That's going to take it up for that side. We have a shaft there coming up to there to take it into that side. Then we can break this belt. And now we've got two completely separate lines coming out, going into our systems. That should work pretty well, I think. I'm throwing a few gearboxes around this place here and I'm hoping, yes, they go in opposite directions. If I connect that to that grind wheel, is that going to go the right way? No, it's going the wrong way. Okay. I throw in two gearboxes and now they're going the right way. Brilliant. And that should be the same on this side as well. Yes, they are. All right, we need the output systems now. Okay, with a bit of jiggery-pokery, things should be much better up here. This set of crushing wheels on the left-hand side of the lift are now coming down this conveyor all the way under that conveyor behind this storage vault and going into that storage vault. These crushing wheels are going above and into that storage vault too. Back over to this side of the crushing wheels, we are splitting off 16 at a time to go down into the iron and flint washing machine. Then on the front of this vault, we've got four more brass funnels, which have these funnels, which are set to 64 each, which go into those chutes, which then go into these crushing wheels. The only thing I need to do now here is stop anything flying off the end. So let's fill the floor in now that you've all seen what's below it and put this casing in there and that'll stop anything going off. All right, cobble is coming in. It's coming out onto these conveyors. Hopefully that one will back up so this one can start as well in a minute. These machines machines are starting to produce gravel and there we go we're starting to get it coming down onto these machines here and they are going through so that means once this line backs up enough we should start moving on to the next line hopefully and now we are starting to get things onto the fourth line occasionally and there we go so that means that this is producing just enough for those sand and gravel machines below to keep up so we should be getting a whole bunch more sand and gravel out of this now there's only one way to find out let's go downstairs we should see immense amounts of sand and gravel being pumped through this thing now. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's loads more than we had before. Believe it or not, the thing slowing us down is actually cobblestone. Again, these things are still going like bilio, <laughs> but we're really just not producing enough. I think I'm going to have to double this up. That hasn't come out too badly, although there's a bunch of texture issues with these vaults because everything's been rotated, but I can fix that. There's obviously no lava in it, and all of these belts are going to be going in the wrong direction, particularly this one, which I didn't mean to include, but somehow managed to anyway. So let's get rid of that, and let's fix this little hole in the wall that it made. Right, that's all the vaults fixed. Right, now we need to get all of these facing in the right direction because they're all wrong. And I think all we need now is a bit of lava and to connect this to our output line. That should be easy. And there we go. That's better. They're both producing at full whack, which means we're getting twice as much coming out there now. So now, with a bit of luck, if we go up to our first floor, we should be seeing a whole bunch more cobble coming in here, a whole bunch more regularly, which should mean this can back up all the way to the end. There we go. We're starting to see a back up on this side now. It just took a minute to kick in. And this side as well. And on here too. Yes. Everything's working finally. Jeez. What a mission. So sand machine, are you producing millions and millions of sand? You are, this is incredible. Iron machine, you're still producing a lot of iron, that's good. The sand vault's actually full. What? The clay one's not, but we're now voiding sand? We're gonna be voiding sand in a minute. So we're actually get. oh geez, that means our fault trucks. <laughs> fault trucks not going fast enough. <laughs> hmm. Okay, if the sand is backing up in there and that fork truck can't carry it through quick enough, that means that we can actually start producing more at this end. However, looking at this end, this is all backed up as well. I think we definitely need to make more clay. 100% we need to make more clay. We need more washers on here. And the way I've tried to achieve that is relatively simple. All I've done is extended this belt, added on another six encased fans, of which two of them still need linking up with power, and I've slowed down the belt significantly to make sure that the clay balls are getting washed by as many fans as possible and by doing that we've now got a constant stream of clay balls pretty much coming out of here which is a lot more than we had before. The downside now is that this item vault's almost full. And our clay bowl system is also full. 
and we're getting the backlog here at our clay press. But as you can see, we are producing a ridiculous amount of clay blocks now. So that all worked rather well. So with all of the problems now solved in this factory, and fingers crossed all of the problems solved in this factory, it's time to build a new contraption. You see, I absolutely love this little forklift truck that comes and gets all of the sand and deposits it. I think it's brilliant. But realistically, if it's carrying sand, it shouldn't be a fork truck at all. It should be a dumper truck. So I want to make a dumper truck. But before I get started, I want to address some comments. And a bunch of them told me that rather than having these fork trucks running on rails that are underneath the platforms and then having the platforms on top of them, I can use something called phantom rails, or basically invisible rails. And whilst there is such a thing as phantom train tracks, and phantom train tracks just mean invisible ones, I ain't going to be getting any of those anytime soon. Because in order to make those, you need phantom membranes. And I haven't got any phantoms. In fact, I don't think I've seen a phantom on this entire Let's Play. So thank you very much for those comments, but I don't have the time in my life for mucking about with phantom membranes. Jeez, right, dumper truck. Now I could start the dumper truck the same way as I started the fork truck with one of these invisible bogies. However, dumper trucks are a little bit interesting because they tend to bend in the middle. So actually, what we are going to have here, instead of one bogey, we're going to have two. And here it is. We've got a big old thing at the front. We've got the attachment point there. And then this section, which is the engine. It's got a storage vault in there, a seat and a controller. And in here, it's got a portable storage interface. But I'm a little bit concerned. Well, this might not work because the portable storage interface is in a different bogey to the vault. So they might not connect. But I'm going to try it anyway. Right, that should be one side done. That should be the other side done. And I don't think they're attached to each other. Then all I need to do is make sure that this section is attached to that block there and that this section is attached to that block there and hopefully, fingers crossed, this is going to work. No structure attached to bogey one. All right, we'll glue that to that and glue that to that. Does that help? Attach at least one forward-facing train controls. But, but I have. They're just at the back, not at the front. Oh, come on, game. Don't tell me I've got to do this. Okay, if I was to attach that to that, how's it going to cope with that then? Yeah, it doesn't mind that, but I don't think that's going to work in the way that I expect it to. Let's just give it a drive and see what happens. Yeah, it's not going to bend in the middle like I wanted it to. Oh, man, that sucks. Okay, let me try something else. I've got it working kind of how I wanted it to. Unfortunately, though, in order to make it work, I've had to put a second set of controls in the front carriage. So I'm going to disassemble it again, remove those from there, dig a hole in there, remove that storage interface there, put that in there instead, cover that back up so they're hidden in there, and now this should work as a train, but it still needs a portable storage interface on this bit to connect to the vault that's inside there. Alternatively, what I could do, let's remove that, let's remove that, let's remove that vault. If I hide the sto portable storage interface in there and put that back, if I break that one there and put the vault in under those controls, that doesn't look too out of place then, because you can only really see it from a couple of different angles. So that should should hopefully work. So let's go and reassemble this. We'll call it dumper truck. And fingers crossed this is going to work. Come on, little dumper truck. Please bend in the middle as we go around corners. It is doing. It's doing exactly what I wanted. Can we drive it around the rest of the thing? Yes. Oh, look at this thing go. It's amazing. <laughs> Woohoo. I made a dumper truck. I made one that actually works. It's incredible. Oh, I love it. Now, all I've got to do is get this to do what this forklift truck is doing instead of the forklift truck, which does mean I'm going to have to relocate a few of the item interfaces because they're in different places on this one. We are not connected. Now we're just going to need a driver. Monkey, you need to change to do the other one, mate. The monkey is driving the dumper truck. This is absolutely wonderful. What a good job he did, monkey. I've got a dumper truck. And if you're worried about the fork trucks, don't worry, I'm not abandoning them. They're just going to get repurposed for something else. And that something else is coming up very soon. Now, be honest, how many of you are halfway through writing a comment telling me I should have put sand in the front of the dumper truck? You're absolutely right, I should have done. So I'm going to. The inside, we can get something like that going on, and I think that looks all right. And the edges don't look too bad. That's still got a nice shape to it, to be honest with you. So now that's all glued in. Let's reassemble it. Find out wherever our monkey's gone off to. He went into the factory somewhere and I've no idea where he went. Oh, he's gone upstairs. <laughs> you don't work in here. <laughs> you work outside, mate. Let's get you back in your chair. There we go. And give you your schedule back and hopefully everything's going to be fine. It is. Does it still bend as it goes around? It does and it's now full of sand. That's loads better. Oh, I love it. So with everything now working very nicely and all of our factories optimized and our little dumper truck running around, it must be time to build the third factory in this spot here. And I have absolutely, genuinely no idea how this is going to go. I haven't even thought of a design or a plan yet. Oh, jeez.
And there we go. I don't think that's come out too badly. I've tried to add in a bit of detail and make this look a little bit more office-y than industrial, even though it is going to have a bunch of production inside. On the roof, I've tried to add in a snow line, like I said I would in the last episode, because we need the snow to stop at some point in this area. And overall, I think there's plenty of space in there to get done what we need to get done. However, the rest of the area around it still needs a whole lot of work. The yard needs finishing off, behind it all needs finishing off, and the station needs sorting as well. But overall, I'm very happy with it. Uh, apart from inside, because, well, there's nothing in here at all. But there is plenty of room. One of the first things I need to do is add a floor in at this level to meet up with this catwalk coming across here, and I think I can probably squeeze a top level up here. So there we go, we got a floor in now. That little bit of roof there has been tidied up, and now that makes me wonder, how am I going to get downstairs? Now, I could put in another lift. There's plenty of room for a lift system in here, but if I were to dig through this floor, we end up right in the middle of this area, and I don't think that's ideal for a lift. The question is, do we actually need to be able to get upstairs from in this building because we actually have access through this building and we've got stairs down here and whilst that's probably not ideal for the people working in there it still kind of works that said though it's actually quite easy to squeeze in the little staircase just down there and that still gives us plenty of room here for storage so i think that's what we're going to end up doing you've already done it oh yeah i've already done it i don't need to end up doing it i've done it already so this time i'm starting the whole thing backwards in the hopes that that's going to help me not have to rebuild this factory several times i've started with adding the chutes the belts and our storage drawers into the storage vaults. I've put threshold switches on all of them and redstone links, and all of these have got smart chutes on with voided storage drawers. Over this side, I haven't got the smart chutes with the storage drawers. That's because these are going to be creating andesite, dara, and granite, and they're going to be coming through a lot more slowly, so I don't need to worry about backing up. And on top of this, I basically just need the same sort of carousel system that we've had set up everywhere else, which should end up looking a little bit like this. And it would probably be a good idea at this point to get some power in here to make sure all of this is going to work and with this line attached to this speed controller that should be power going up there i just need to make sure all this is going the right way which it's not they're going backwards and so are they that's fine now this doesn't need to go crazy quick because this is just conveyor so let's put it on 64 facing the other way now if i pop up here that line's going that way and that one's going that way which means we can link everything else up successfully then with a couple of gearboxes and some shaft that's everything facing in the right direction now a little rotary conveyor is complete so if we've got our andesite all right and it all going out of there we're going to need this to be our little area where we're crafting it all together okay so here's my little plan i'm not 100 sure if this is going to work but my idea here is that we're going to have both quartz and cobblestone coming along this conveyor around here that goes around the whole top section of this room loops around and goes back on itself so this one will take diorite off the belt this one will take cobblestone and behind them we've got some smart shoots with the opposite going down to these bottom ones so that should create diorite which should hopefully then come out into this middle tunnel here and get split onto these three belts so we'll have diorite going to our storage system from there going into this system here and then going into that system this one will take the diorite from there it's going to take cobblestone from that belt there and put it in there and that's going to create andesite which will go along on that belt and then this one is going to take diorite in there it's going to take more quartz off this funnel from up here and that's going to create granite which is going to go out there and they should all then just go straight out of there into the storage system okay everything over here now has power all of the belts are going in the right direction direction so i guess it's a good idea to test this by throwing some items on manually now is it going to get picked up by these funnels it is it's oh i didn't put oh, i didn't put stoppers in place let's try that again shall we now they should only pick up one at a time which shouldn't make the system back up they are doing that's good they're going round there excellent and they're going the whole way round so now this auto crafter should be making yes it is dial right that's coming through there this one should be making andesite it is that's going through there and this one should be making granite it is it's going through there this is wonderful and now I've moved this entire thing onto its own little speed controller, so now it's running at full speed. So now let's see what happens. Quartz and cobble are going round. The machines are picking it up much, much faster this time. And these crafters are going like Billio. And now we're producing a whole bunch of this stuff pretty quickly. Oh, yes. That'll do. So now that we've got that in place and our output in place, all we need to do now is wash and blast soul sand and then wash red sand as well and get all of that coming out over here. Okay, here's where I'm up to. As you can see in this room, we now have two sets of shoes standing on two encased vans. They're going up to two different machines. Up these stairs, we've got a big old washing machine.
machines with a lot of encased fans in it. Most of it, except quartz, is going to be going down those chutes onto the carousel there. And then all of the quartz is going to come out this way, down here and down this chute onto this belt system that feeds around into those machines. Back up the stairs, the other machine is the blasting machine, which is going to take some more of the soul sand and turn that into scoria, which is also going to go down those chutes and also onto our carousel. And apart from power, all of those things seem to be set up okay. So all I need to do now is get cobble in here and up to that belt, get soul sand in here and into this chute system and that chute system and get red sand in here and into that one as well. Okay, everything now has power. Downstairs, I've added in a whole bunch of speed controllers to control all of the fans and the belts at separate speeds. And that's because we want the fans blowing really fast to get the items up there all the way, but we don't want the belts going too quick because we don't want the items going too crazy. So all of those are connected and then we've got these poles also going all the way upstairs which are giving power to our washing and blasting machines and that should be fingers crossed everything 100 done all i've got to do is get cobblestone soul sand and red sand in here how hard could it be off you go monkey what are you going to do first the soul sand is fit oh there's no oh, no power again it's full of lava they all have full the why but now he's reversing up there other monkey couple monkey off you go where are you going now you've got the totally the wrong oh, excellent yes now he's coming up that way problem is now he can't go forward and neither can he oh what are you do you can't do it no 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 oh geez there's been an accident right anyway what's happening in here oh that's a problem oh Oh no, how have we got normal sand in there? Okay, I think I may have fixed it. Oh no, oh no, I've gone completely the wrong way. We've had another collision. I've been so kidding. Oh, how have you, what have you, what have you, you're so useless. I may have overcomplicated all of this a bit. Let's create a one way system. This is the best idea I've ever had. I'm gonna craft my very first toolbox. That slot is for soul sand and that slot is for red sand. And then even when it's empty, it's gonna remember that. That's my little plan. Let's get rid of that barrel. Oh, jeez. It goes. And it can't go anywhere because these ones have had yet another collision. How? How can you collide on a one-way system? I don't understand. That way. You. That way. Oh, no. Again. How? How? Are you... <laughs> now the yellow one's crashing. Oh, this is ridiculous. Stop crashing. Right, I got my eyes on you this time, useless dumper truck monkey. Oh. As soon as he's... Oh, now we've got a problem. No, don't crash. Oh, no. <laughs> This one can't go anywhere. Oh, no. What have I done? This was a nightmare. Right. Okay. Right. First things first. I need to clean up all the mess in this factory from what they... Oh, it was hours ago. Jeez. Oh, and then we'll worry about that. Okay. With the factory all tidied up, things are in full swing. We're getting a whole bunch of red sand and soul sand going up there, which is all getting washed, which is fantastic. And we're getting a whole bunch of soul sand going up there, which is getting blasted into scoria. But the good news is we're getting an absolute ton of gold and dead bushes and scoria coming through here, which means we're starting to get up a bunch of things into these item vaults. The only problem is, as I predicted earlier on, this thing's not moving around because it's pretty much just full of cobble and I haven't even got the cobble turned on yet and that's just from the backlog earlier. So what I need to do is have a filter system to take items back off this belt at this point and then put them back on again if there's space. So I think I'm going to have another storage vault here that's not too big, put a chute into that at that point there to take those items off there to allow things to move around and then I just need a way of getting the cobble back up onto here at that point over there and it would be nice to actually filter off whatever quartz we've got onto this belt because at the moment we're not collecting any the quartz. So collecting the quartz should be easy enough, just put in a funnel there with an item filter. To feed the cobble back out of there, all I've done is added in a couple more conveyors there, that that's taking it back in there, and then that sorts that little problem out. That said, we're never going to get any cobble in there if I can't get these monkeys under control. So that's my next job. I'm AFK, or at least I was, I'm not anymore. And that's because I wanted to make sure everything was running alright for a reasonable amount of time, without everything crashing and getting lost and doing the wrong thing again. And coming in here, we are getting quartz and cobble going around this thing which means we are producing all of the things that we need to produce we got a whole bunch of dead bushes we got loads of gold nuggets we've got quite a lot of quartz in here as well and a whole bunch of scoria in fact we're voiding it off we should definitely stop that processing all i've got to do is stick a redstone link on there in receive mode with a one of them and a one of them
them. There we go. We're not going to produce any more scoria now. Good. In terms of andesite, granite, and diorite, these have all been doing well as well. So that's all going really well. And the best news is that all of our fork truck systems are now working perfectly with all, <laughs> without crashing into each other, although it's close. It's very close. But yeah, we haven't had a crash in about an hour and a half, which says to me that things are working as they should. And the way I've achieved that is by basically making all of the track down here a little bit more simple. We've got some overlap points. We've got a bunch of signals over here, but realistically, there's not many places the trains can go now, so they can't get confused. The only thing I don't like, and we've just missed it, so we'll have to wait a couple of seconds, is that now the dumper truck, when it's finished here, has to do a crazy loop around here in order to turn around and go back again. And once it's finished dropping the items off, it actually does a big circle around here, crashes into this building, and then goes back again. So we're going to have to do something with this yard here. So all in all, everything's going really well, and I actually think this time... I'm not going to have to come back in the next video, smash it all to pieces and start again. Even this bit, I was really concerned about all of these items getting stuck on here and not looping around properly, but even this is working. It's all working perfectly, which clearly means something's gone wrong. But anyway, that's enough for now. We've still got a whole bunch of tidying up to do around here. We've still got a whole bunch of yard to make. We've still got a whole bunch of station to do, but that is enough for today. You thought that dumper truck was going to get me then, didn't you?